This is the new one, the Adventure 5M. I got this because uh, it has vibration compensation. Well, because this has vibration compensation, when it shakes, it compensates for the shaking and it prints stuff perfectly. Where this one, this older, uh, this is one of the older printers I have. I have a few other older printers other than this particular one. But um, when this one, when that shakes, this will unalign and uh, prints will fail. So this new surface, look at that. This is one of my favorite reasons for having it. It has a flexible print bed, so that means you can get the prints off this bed really easily. It's also magnetic. It's heated. It's not my first heated bed, but, uh, but you know, that's a, beyond the point. So, yeah, much easier for prints to stick to uh, this surface and much easier for them to come off. Vibration compensation, which basically means the freight trains can come through here and there's not a problem. And the biggest thing I like about this 3D printer, uh, this particular one right here, is this one, this uh, Adventure 5M, is four times faster than this particular 3D printer. Four times faster. That That's almost like getting four of these 3D printers in one of these. Um, now, I have some other printers by a company called PrinterBot, and this printer is actually 12 times faster than those. So that's like having 12 printers in one. So yeah, these newer printers can print a lot faster, but still have really good top quality printing. Right, so these are some of the prints I printed off of the Flash Forge already. Look at the quality of the stonework in there. Uh, my God, and I printed off two of these. These are double wide tunnel portals uh, for N gauge. And yeah, the quality is just superb. Uh, once we paint these up, weather them up, it's going to look like the real thing. If you don't know, tunnel portals mostly are done in plaster castings, and they can really crack easily. So be able to do this here on a 3D printer is pretty phenomenal. And just to get that quality of stonework there is pretty good. Uh, I've done a number of other structures as well in N-Gage. Um, i got this little barn-style thing here. You can see that, you know, you can put that sort of shiplap of uh, sort of vertical um planking on there and you can't tell that you can't even see the print lines you can't see the layer lines like you can in some of the previous 3d printers i've owned you know i've owned several 3d printers over the years i've been printing since 2012 and this machine uh overall quality is pretty phenomenal here even on this cylinder thing now you're going to see a little stepper lines here or there but it's very hard to actually tell that they're there um it's pretty good darn quality uh, I mean, even that ladder looks pretty good. There's a little stringiness up there. We'll have to get that with our little Dremel before we uh, add paint, weather, and even make it look like uh, there's some rust on this thing. Um, yeah, the quality levels. This also printed off this little cabin. Um, really kind of cool. I'll show this on here on this video. This is a little cabin that I made. Uh, printed off the roof and the bottom half. And this one, I actually, uh, I got this printer for the vibration compensation. And this particular print was printing when a freight train was coming through my area. When a freight train comes through my area, uh, it causes an earthquake to the house, a mini earthquake. And any of my previous printers, such as the one over here, this one over here, if it's printing, and that train comes through, the print unaligns and it basically can be thrown away. But I bought this printer because of the vibration compensation. And this print was printing when that freight train came through. And look at nothing at all unaligned. It print perfect. So that's the bottom half. This is the top half. Let's see if I can put it together. There's a little notch in there for the, the chimney. So yeah, it's a little... It's a little cabin yeah it's really cool it's actually a cottage it's a timber frame cottage really cool quality level well i made this little tray as well look at that a little sorting tray um see if i have anything else over here have a couple uh a couple things over here out most of the stuff i put away but yeah i have a whole ton of different things this is a um container i also have uh fans i do a lot of pla and pet g uh, 3D printing. I use those uh, filaments and those filaments require more airflow. Oh, I bought the open air printer because I print in PLA, high speed PLA and PET G. 
uh, filaments. And those want more air and more airflow. So this little uh, fan here by Renobi, I got this, I think, on sale for about 20 bucks. This thing works great. Awesome printer. It has multiple speeds. Uh, battery operated. Also has a little clamp on it. These are awesome. Uh, definitely consider picking some of these up. But yeah, really awesome 3D printer. Uh, I'm really loving the Adventure 5M. The uh, vibration compensation works. Much bigger print space than uh, some of my 3D printers, but that's not the reason I got it. I love the a flexible print bed and the magnetic build surface. It does have the heated bed on this particular model. Always like that. It also has hot swappable uh, nozzles. The nozzles, I think, are a little bit more than most of the 3D printers I've gotten in the past, but they're not too bad, around 35 40 bucks. 40 um, So right now I have a, a 4 millimeter in there. Or if we're doing uh, PLA and uh, PETG, that's okay. If you're doing TPU in this, you can do TPU even on an open air printer. You're going to need a 6 or 8 millimeter nozzle. Uh, you try to print that with a 4 millimeter nozzle and you're going to run into all sorts of problems. So, yeah, awesome printer. Does a fantastic job. Loving it. Hey guys and gals. So on this area right here of the video, uh, there's a freight train coming through my area. That's actually one of the main reasons I got this 3D printer. It has this technology called vibration compensation. So the freight train, when it comes through my area, it creates like all the structures in this area where I'm at here, uh, causes like many earthquakes. And all my previous 3D printers, if they were printing when this train came through, uh, the print would unalign and literally you would have to throw it away. And a lot of times, you know, you're printing something that you've been printing for eight or nine hours and that train would come through and just destroy the print. Um, and you were not, I was not getting anything done uh, when this was occurring. So I found this uh, 3D printer by Flashforge. The Adventure 5M has this thing called vibration compensation. And so here during this video, and it's really loud with the, you know, with the horn going and this 3D printer makes a lot of noise. So I'm just doing a voiceover here. But uh, yeah, this print printed perfect. Okay, never unaligned once. Uh, this particular print's uh, one of my miniature models. It's like a um, timber cottage. This technology does work. This is the main reason why I got this 3D printer. Uh, my 3D printing uh, use. And this is probably the best 3D printer I've had. I've, the only thing I miss on this machine is my previous uh, Flash Forge printer had LED lights on. Uh, this one doesn't, so it gets very dark. So that I went out and got this. Um, oops, that's really bright. I got one of these. Um, so I have this like little project light here. Um, and I can just like move it around, bounce it off the wall or whatever. So I use that uh, in conjunction over here. The screen is glitching every once in a while as it's printing. See that? So it's printing this. Printing fine. It can seem to be a problem with it. But yeah, I just noticed like all of a sudden, look at that. Why is it doing that? It's never done that before. It's been going good for about six weeks, not a problem. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, I'm getting this interface. Yeah, that is bizarre. There is something weird going on. Get the light on now. Let's see here, I have a light on the camera. See that right there is the connector that connects the screen right there. And it comes up in the back. This okay, our print actually worked. And our screen. thing was causing a little problem with some glitching and what I found out is after going to their website it said it probably is a loose connection to either this screen or the motherboard and I found out actually this screen um that cable that uh let me see if I can see it let's turn this light off so that cable that comes up there and it goes up to the screen yeah it was loose behind the screen and it was causing that glitching a really simple fix I uh, had to go back and just put it back in there, and it actually went in much better. And looks like it's working fine now. So yeah, that glitching is gone. So if you get that, it's most likely a loose connection either to the screen or to the motherboard. Uh, I kind of wanted to go over that. I know it's I don't have a tripod. 
So this is the thing. You can name your own machine. I like to do that because I actually have uh, you know, quite a few uh, different uh, 3D printers. Uh, temperature, you can actually even dial it in your temperature if you want. Or you can do it through your slicer. Uh, so you can change that here. This gives you information about your machine here. Uh, that's just a picture of your thing. And if you click here, this is your internal hard drive. So um, it sends stuff that you uh, work on. Uh, but this here's a print that I want to uh, throw away. So here, to throw it away, to remove it from the hard drive, you can just do this. Sometimes the touch screen doesn't work so good. So here's a couple of things that I have printed. It also comes preloaded with some stuff. I don't keep too many things on here that are mine, but uh, you know it comes preloaded with uh, this. These are ones that are preloaded. You can delete those as well. So you can see here's a couple things I printed recently. I usually delete most of the stuff I print off of here, but you can keep it. It's got 5.6 gigabytes. You can also interact with. Um, USB. So if you have a USB uh, thing, and USB is up to the side here, it's a USB 2.0. Unfortunately, no, uh, no USB C. Over here is our how you load or unload filament. So right here, uh, this is how you put your filament in. This one here is how you swap your filament out, and this has something to do with the nozzle. Um, we don't have to worry about that. Now this here is your uh, settings. So you, you can change your position of your machine. This here is your networking. So by clicking on each one of these things will open up your networking. One for Wi-Fi, one for Ethernet, one for hotspot, one for static IP, and one for network mode. I won't put this on because I have passwords and stuff set. But Wi-Fi is basically Wi-Fi. You have to turn on and off these, by the by the way. So if your Wi-Fi or your hotspot's not working, maybe because it's turned off. Um, so here you can hook up to FlashPrint, Kira, and even OctaSlicer. OctaSlicer, I found out, has to use the hotspot. Okay. They also have a cloud service. I've never used this, so I don't have to worry about that. And then last think this is our leveling yes our leveling our vibration test so if you need to restart the test if your printer moved or something or you're not getting good leveling you start that there and then last we have an information screen and it's just like here you can change your name you can have your account what group you have it on what nozzle your firmware i have to update my firmware i know there's a new one out uh here you can remove the sound if you like the reason i keep the f sound in there when the print's done, it, it makes a noise, and that kind of helps me because a lot of times I'm not following the whole printing process. Let's go to page two. We have logs here and licensing. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's that's the little computer screen. Not too many people really go over the computer screen, I've noticed. Uh, this machine works really awesome. Now, this is not my first FlashForge printer. Um, I've had a number of FlashForge printers, and it's not my first 3D printer. I've had... Uh, also, printers by Solidoodle, uh, PrinterBot, and M3D. And I've also used a MakerBot uh, printer that was a friend of mine's. So, yeah, absolutely awesome machine. little right angle things for uh, doing some woodworking and also doing a uh, model building. It wastes about 500 millimeters of filament absolutely ridiculous i've owned several flash forge printers in the past and other 3d printing brands and none of them wasted this much filament when you switch filament usually it's between 50 millimeters and about 150 millimeters but this is easily five six hundred millimeters of absolute waste it's just really 
it really upsets me and probably anyone else that is 3D printing. You don't want to see your filament go to waste like this. And yeah, so I've already contacted Flash Forge um, and hopefully they fix this with a firmware update.